Welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls, and I've got a very big job ahead of us. Uh, Janet and I are going to have to polish the entire stern of the boat after its final flow coat spray last weekend. Uh, it's come up absolutely perfect, and we're very, very pleased, but there's going to be some wet sanding and some buffing before we finish this part. This week we've got Sammy's last week with us, and... Uh, we basically said goodbye to him after four weeks of solid work. So don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and, uh, and follow along because uh, there's lots coming up. Okay, we're onto our handrails and we've got this one here and we just had uh, Al, our friend, Al Maybauer here and he's given us some really good hints on how we can make this part look even better. Um, this is a nice secure handrail where you're walking up, so I didn't shape this. I probably should have angled it down a little bit. It does actually give you a good sense of security when you get to this height. For the lifelines that are going to be attached to here, at about this height here, 750 off the deck. Now, down on this coping, or combing. Are you coping? I'm not coping today. I'm a little bit rusty today. I had a rugged night's sleep. This combing on the outside of our hull extension needs a further handrail and I initially was going to follow the exact curve of the, uh, the combing. So we've tacked this piece of MDF on and done some measurements and that just looked really super boxy. I wasn't quite happy with it and then Alan, Sam and Janet and I have had a bit of a bit of a session together where we've established this line here. It goes all the way down to a 45 degree stanchion base, which I've got that'll mount there. And then this will come up, bend and follow this line, which gives us a little bit more of a sleek finishing towards the end of the boat. Whether we put in a vertical is a matter of how strong it looks once it's all welded together. But what we'll do is I'll use this as my mold and I'll go and cut this and I may bend a form onto it and then we can push it against it and get it exactly the same on both sides. I was worried we were going to get up here somewhere, but that's going to look quite nice. I think if we can bend some pipe to that, that's your next challenge, buddy. Love Sarbo, it. To bend that. Right, uh, we've got our template here for our curved handrail, and we've got an offcut here from our last effort. How long's that? 1910. What do you reckon this is? 1800. About 1800. Was it? 1760. 1760, right. Yeah, Alright, so we've got 12 centimetres extra, which is good because I can cut it off on either end. Yeah, but we want to cut it off on that end, not this end. Alright, so we're making vertical lines every 50 mil, uh, 50 millimetres, and what that's going to give us is potentially the angle at the top of the bend that we have to put into this tube. Hopefully, that will give us incremental bends every 50 millimetres. We thought if we did it every 10 centimetres or 100 millimetres, the problem with that is it'll look like it was kinked. So we're going to try to bend it every 50 mil, which could be a long time bending. We could do it every 25 and it'd be even more accurate. Anyway, it's just a thought. The more... Every 20... Yeah, the more bends, the better. So I'll just show you what Sam's planning here. This is our vertical. We'll check that with the spirit level off our handrail. Yep. And then this what's is, the plan? This is a technique I learnt in my engineering degree uh, when we were determining the area of a riverbed. So oh, yeah? you take multiple measurements yep. and then you check the angles. Are they like a transect? Well, you, they, yeah, you basically take the volumes of these to get your riverbed, but the same concept applies. Whereas you can use these, uh, these vertical lines as points of reference to then measure the angle 
of how far off our bend is from the perpendicular All right, what we use got there? A, using a protractor it's around 16 degrees All right and as you move down the curve it gets steeper so if we measure here it's 20 right and as we get further you know, down, we should be riding them on shouldn't we oh, we'll, we'll get we'll to that at the moment and we're down to 40 degrees here okay so, you so can it's, see it's, it's increasing as it goes down actually the angle that we're measuring here it's is there. that point yeah. But the angle is actually shorter. Yeah, it's going to be similar. Well, some would say that it's not. I think it is. Yeah, Stop. See, as it goes straight, though, we lose this. Because so, we're elongate, where this isn't 50 mil. No, it'll be less. It's more than 50 mil because it's a curve. First, as two. we bend them around the around the template, they will, we can remark them. I don't think we need to worry about the first two or three until we get to say- Unless you one. want to do a light bend. Well, we could do a really light one, but we don't want to over bend it. No, 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 it's like a tap. tap. Yeah, maybe we fix it at the end. We'll see how we go. I agree with you. Let's just cross the ones where we want to bend. But then as we get further down... See, that's no good now. No, nah, but just put a cross on the ones where you actually want to bend. Yeah, but I'm going to have to remark it. Yeah, yeah we'll mark it. we're going to have to start there and then bring it out and sit it here. Because as we bend around, we get this point. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is ground zero here. Yeah. So the first one's... We need to mark the centre line of the... Of yeah, the, that's just going to say we should definitely... So do. we do that. But if we, we say this is our first one. This is our second one. Why don't we mark every degree change? I, well, what I'm going to do is put tape on and then mark it, and then mm. we know. I was just thinking, but if you, because this isn't where we're bending it, we're actually bending it here. Yeah, but if we this bend every, on. if we bend every degree mm. change, that's 15 bends to here. Right. And then it will be even more bends down here. Yeah. But like every degree, if we mark every degree change. Yeah. So, you, so I could write it on the tape. Yeah, just every plus is a degree. I think taping it to go, because then we can write on it and it won't rub off. It's going to rub off as we handle it and move it. This is going. This is a pretty complicated piece, isn't it? I thought it would be... I'll oh, just stand there and eyeball it, but it's not going to be... Anything circular is not easy. No, no, it's actually... It's not even... And that's the problem, is it's not even circular. It's, well, no. It's a pretty Anything... complex shape. Any, oh no, so anything that's not. This is our zero. So we need a line straight down the center. I'm going to put that arrow there. So this is going to be our center line. Which will help us keep it in the, the same plane. And then we're going to go there. And we're well, we're marking it out at every 25 mil. I'm not really sure, every 50 mil, I'm not really sure whether that's going to be enough. We did it because it was based on the um, the degree changes. Yeah, so it's one so, degree per 50 mil. Yeah, because it's going to be pretty hard to bend. Yeah, to achieve this to... shape. One degree every 50 mil should give us, in the worst case, we'll just give it a crack. It's definitely bending. Are you happy with it? Oh, no, so we're getting a really slight, slight bend. You're definitely getting a little bit of a bend in it. And four, fourth bend, and we've got absolutely bugger all in it so far. Probably um, more, isn't it? it one way. We're getting the centre line is actually on the bottom of this one. So we'll start at our our ground zero and now we're up to a fifth station and we're getting a good we're actually getting it i think mm -hmm. it's looking good right uh, so that's our zero so that's giving me a little bit of excess to put a notch in it and just in case you're a little bit out but yeah we're getting there that's cool bend number how many sorry how many bends have you done so far sorry, start that again. <laughs> no, stop that. Funny. Uh, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one degree bends. And how far through are we? About, I don't know, 25%.
How long have we been going? Yeah, half an hour. <laughs> Probably an hour. Anyway, let's go. Alright, oh, look at it. It's actually looking good. Yeah. You're worried if it looks bad. I oh, won't. Set looking bad. There we go. Let go? Yeah. Right. Good having the tape on it, actually stop it getting scratched. It's just pretty smooth that tube bender, isn't it? Where are we going here? Oh mate, I'm telling ya. <laughs> Look at that. You can tell what we kind of overwhelmed with this one. But, yeah, but that's a that MDF MDFs. template. It's a jigsaw template. I think it's looking pretty good. Be interesting to see what it looks like we take all the tape off. Where it's got big flat marks in it. I don't think it will, it's looking Spot on. Fantastic. Right over that successful bend of our first handrail. We're very, very happy with that guy. It was a bit of a mess over there. We're going to get all the masking tape off now. But I really don't see how you do it otherwise, unless you had a computer controlled mandrel bender. But uh, yeah, I found it. <laughs> we're on to our second one. This is for our port side. We're marked up and we're going to do exactly the same process. We can't even improve on it because I'm not really sure how we'd start. So this is our second one. It's actually the first one, isn't it? We're just going to check it for accuracy. Wow, well, I reckon we've got probably a quarter of a degree out, mate. That is just sensational. Well done. Brilliant effort. Brilliant effort. Hey, it's Sammy's last day, and I uh, thought I'd save the shittiest job for last. I'm the sort of dad I am. So, <laughs> we're going to move all these pieces out so I can get make a pile of steel and a pile of fiberglass. Not convinced I shouldn't be moving the steel because it'd be lighter. <laughs> and it would make it a lot easier. Yeah, this is heavy, man. There's some heavy stuff. I've got to get in and cut the rest of this up, but I can't cut up any more until I get some rooms. So we're going to make a pile of this towards the fence, and then hopefully we can uh, get in and start to chop up the steel. I've got to be careful I'll cut it up so it doesn't collapse in on itself, which... Um, is certainly possible. I think I'll be taking the top level off, collapsing it, and then cutting off the bottom bit last. I've got to basically get it to the steel merchant. He's going to come and pick it up for me. Um, happy? Love it. Mate, what a job, eh? And they're heavy. I mean, each one of these would be two or 300 kilos, at least. Well, no matter what. Well, I mean, like, I can get down and get that. I got it. I'm pulling back on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sad day. Oh, we had the camera on all that time. Oh, swearing. All the blood, sweat, swearing and tears. Sam's last day and I'll give him a prick of a job. That was no fun. 
there's a lot of sweat going on. Right, so the last bit I've got to get rid of is this. I've already made a pretty uh, serious cut there. That chunk there, the thing is I've got to move. This car's been here for five months and it's just going to get covered in shit tomorrow when I start hacking this up. So I'm actually going to keep a section from here all the way around to here and back to up on the back of the lounge suite and I intend to use that potentially to make new hatches for the back lounge because I've got those plastic ones, the, the cheap plastic ones. If anyone treads on them, I'd rather have full, you know, locked down, proper recessed hatches if I can. And because I've got the mold, I can just replicate that pretty quickly. And I've got these really super strong hatches. And, uh, and someone did actually make a comment about how I was putting cheap hatches on a great boat. So I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna get rid of the cheap hatches and I'm gonna do this, but that may be a bit later on. A few months ago, Sam rang me and said, I'm going to come and give you a month's work, uh, four weeks work. How would you be about that? And I said, oh, mate, any help would be amazing. And sadly, we're at the end of it. And here he is. I think I'm tearing up. Oh, stop it. No, we've had, a, we've had a pretty amazing time. I just want to get your thoughts on the last four weeks, um, what your dad's like to work with, etc. It's been a fun four weeks down here on the hull. Uh, well, now it's a boat, not just a hull. Uh, finishing off all the templates inside, getting all the walls in, ready to go. What else did we do? Made some railings, cut yeah. some windows, yeah. glued some windows. Epic a bunch of done it, Did a bunch of fairing. Sick of mixing fairing compound by hand. I'll never do that again. Uh, and lots of sanding, which has been good. It's been fun to wrap up today. We uh, were pulling apart the mould. I'm sure you'll see it. Uh, all the bits and pieces we were lifting. It's been fun. It's been nice to work slowly and chip away at things and get it done uh, but yeah we got more done than I thought we would and so it was it was fun it was lots of laminating and yeah great to spend some time with dad and mum watching them work away and yeah we got along not too many fights got fed don't pay you very well down here as a shipwright so <laughs> any shipwrights looking for work don't message dad oh. <laughs> but yeah lots of fun really enjoyed it and Sure, I'll be back at some point, maybe when we launch in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Try six. <laughs> so a lot of dads don't get the chance to do this because uh, a lot of people don't get the chance to build a boat like this. I've been lucky that um, Janet's tolerated it. And to be honest, Sam, Veronica, Ellen and Zach have all tolerated it as well. They've put up with you talking about it for near on six years. And uh, that's been uh, pretty tough because pretty much all I talk about is the boat. Oh, actually, no, I don't. I've managed a lot of things in that time, but... To have Sam and Ellen and Zach and Vaughn and Janet involved in this is just the key. I set out to build this on my own. Um, I think I've realized you just can't do it. I could not have done this on my own. We're not finished yet, but we are on the homeward stretch. Sam's been absolutely brilliant and I just love him because he's just been, you know, just into it. He's driven me pretty hard. I've got to be honest, I'm not used to working with someone who um, wants to just get efficiencies out of a job. That's just not, you're not going to get efficiencies out of a job like this because everything has to be done three or four times and the preparation just to do the windows was, well, how long did we go on the windows? It was about two and a half days, but they got glued in. I think the first two took us three hours yeah, and yeah. then we did the last four in an hour and a half. Yeah, correct. So. And the handrails, we spent one whole morning bending a handrail and then the next one took 20 minutes because yeah. we knew what we were doing. So there's all of that that happens when efficiencies come along. And, and I, I think that's the thing with boat factories is once they get a system, um, we have no system here. This is just all fly by wire effectively. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's artisan, artisan quality. And uh, when you start to do things like that, you lose efficiencies and obviously then I want to change something like the cockpit or whatever. But really at the end of the day, we're getting a boat that we really want. And I could not be happier with the work that Sam's done. He's heading back to Sydney today, spend time with his partner. Veronica's missed, it, missed him. But however, she's just been on the Great Barrier Reef all week, so I don't think she's missed him at all. Yeah. I've definitely got the short straw. <laughs> there's, no, there's no snorkeling here. No. So he's off to Fiji next week for a three-day holiday. And then he's off to Canada for six weeks. So if you're in Vancouver and you run into him in the downtown Vancouver, give him, a, give him a yell, buy him a beer because he's friggin' earned it. I'm going to take him home and have a beer for lunch and, uh, and then I'll be back. So see you later, mate. Thank you. See you, everybody. It's been fun. <laughs>